What's up, Profitable Stylist? Here we go. How do you grow your hair extension clientele? How do you get started with your extension clientele? Over the past couple of weeks, we have been talking about... <laughs> yeah, who knows, right? It's witchcraft. The emoji. You know the emoji. <laughs> We've been My talking about over emoji. the past couple of weeks, different techniques, different patterns, different types of hairs, what, why, how... The, the and then what, what are all the W's I forgot and uh, <laughs> and so I'm now wide. how do you put this into practice how do you put this all together this is what we're going to go on about it might be a little bit of a series I don't know I, I might be a little too much to share in this one but I, I would say if you're going to do anything you got to start at the beginning and maybe you need to learn how to do extensions. And I know we've done a video about that before, but I wanted to also do a little bit of a little bit of housekeeping. And one of the things about the industry right now that's uh, that would drive me crazy if I was a new hairdresser is the word focus. Some people are saying you need to focus, and then some people are saying you need to learn everything. Don't stop learning. Get education. And that can be pretty confusing because they are not the same. You can't keep getting education on tons of different things and focus. And I think that I really quickly want to say a little bit about that because we're going to be talking about how to grow a hair extension business. So this is assuming you're already licensed <laughs> or you're in school getting ready to get started. And I don't think, uh, uh, my opinion is I don't necessarily think you should start building an extension clientele right out of school. Some people do it, some are successful, but it is the harder way. You just got a license to do hair. You might as well not focus at first. Try everything, try and do a lot of things, get a lot of education and figure out what you're good at. I know we did a whole video about, about that and when to focus. And then somewhere in the first year or six months to a year and a half, you start to say, you know what? I like this, this, and this. Hair extensions might be one of them. Now you can focus on one or two or three things. And for me, extensions and hair replacement were the two things I focused on. They made me a lot of money. I enjoyed the big change. So it was like I enjoyed the money and the change in people's lives. It changed my life financially. It was rewarding. So that changed me also. And then the clients, they loved it so much. So we're going to do a bit of a series on how to build a hair extension business if you're already a licensed hairdresser and you either are already doing them or not doing them, just a little bit of a summary. Did you want to add anything to that beginning? Yeah. Lift your camera up that much. The camera. Oh, my, the top of my head's getting chopped off. That much. <laughs> there you go. Oh, you, is it because you want to see the poster back there or is it you want to see me better? I, I, I'm i jealous of your hair. I, I want your hair. Oh. <laughs> I want to admire. I want to admire all of it. <laughs> I know it is yeah, a lot of freaking. You know, th this is one of the running themes that we that I keep pushing all the time. You need to make mistakes. You need to practice. You need to get good. And the only way to do that is to learn. Be, be bad to get good. You got it. Yeah, you have you have to be bad to get good, right? One of the things <laughs> Darren says all the time, uh, an advice that he gave a long time ago, and I still do this to this day. You know, an athlete, a professional athlete has a coach, even the best athletes in the world, they still have coaches. And every week, every, or excuse me, every day during the week, they practice for hours and hours and hours, just so when it's game time on Sunday or whatever the day is for that one hour or two hour game that they're playing, they've practiced for 40 hours for a one hour game so they can be perfect at it. So they can be awesome at it. Right. It's the same thing. You don't want to come straight out the gate. You barely, yeah, you learned in school. Okay, fine. But you don't know how to do real world haircut, real world color, real world extensions. <laughs> Trying to learn a thousand dollar service in real time is an extremely costly way of learning something right. in real time. That's true. Not to mention it does actually cost to learn because you still have to buy that hair or use that hair or yeah. most companies, even us in, in each of our techniques, have uh, lower cost hair, uh, less quality hair, basically means cheaper hair so that you can practice on a person or a mannequin. Ask for that if you need to practice because you're right. You need to get some, some practice under your belt. I never minded doing free work. If I was going to practice, I didn't mind putting on a real person. 
Sure, I'll practice a little bit on a mannequin, but I was really clear with my consultation. I'm going to do something on you that might not. I, I remember my first couple of failures. My my very uh, first head of weft hair extensions was on my mother-in-law, and it was curly, curly hair. It was this medium reddish brown. I think I had the hair free. I don't know where I got the hair. I put rows and rows and rows and rows, and she had this big mountain of curly hair, and she hated it. And we spent four or five hours putting it in, and then the next two or three taking it out. <laughs> it was just horrible. And I mean, if I would have used that as like, my uh, like, nope, I'm not ever doing this. I wouldn't be an extension trainer today, but I use that like, I think I can do it better. <laughs> She's probably not going to let me, but I can do it better. And I did. I mean, I've, I've messed up so many things in the past. I prefer messing up on real people as long as they know that's the, that's the possibility. Fair enough. Fair enough. The yeah. other thing about hair extensions and getting started with hair extensions there's so many other aspects that people don't realize this is and i guess it depends on the company that you're working with if you're working yeah. with human hair extensions they you can manipulate them you can customize them and you have to be comfortable with being able to do that too do you do they come pre-waved pre-curled do you have to curl them yourself do you have to color them? Do they come colored? If they do come colored, are they matching exactly with the client that you're that, that you're trying to, you know, put them into? Or do you have to tone or color or adjust that yourself? You know, color started somewhere. And wherever color started from somewhere, you have to be able to feel confident not only to put them into somebody's hair, but to also blend blend that into somebody's hair as well too whether it's cutting styling the the the, the prep work the pre-prep work all, all of that above how do you feel about that so uh, i i uh you know it's funny i i see you stole one of my notes there the color started somewhere <laughs> we share notes and and i i like the way you took it a whole different way because because what i thought about was in the early days of doing hair i remember and and listen you gotta you gotta take some cues from the these old guys you know not you personally but everybody watching because sometimes yes our old old ideas don't mean anything in today's world but sometimes they're golden nuggets and today i think a lot of hairdressers just take for granted they get out of school and they're going to do color highlights color melts blends balayage ombre, all these weird words that have popped up recently but there was a day 30 years ago when i learned how to do hair where a very small percentage of people had any color highlights in their hair. And the color companies would say, now listen, every single person that sits in your chair could benefit from color of some sort. You don't have to do full head, you don't have, they don't have to have gray hair like just the old ladies you're doing. Look at this, I got a cut this week and I didn't get color and I am getting some gray like those, I'm an old lady. And so, I mean, everybody can benefit from color. So it was like maybe, and it looks like in this light I got highlights, but I don't. This is just natural. But maybe men could even get a few highlights in the front. Your ladies, just a couple of sprinkles of blonde. You don't have to think about like totally changing people's color. They were always selling the small jobs. And then fast forward, it wasn't even 30. I mean, fast forward 10, 12 years, I, I would be in a restaurant eating with friends and look around, hairdresser friends, and say, you remember when they used to try to tell us everybody can benefit from color? Now you look around and it's hard to find somebody that doesn't have some sort of alteration to the color of their hair. I've been saying this for, I don't know, seven or eight years now about extensions. And we're getting pretty close to that, maybe, maybe 15 years. I've been saying that about extensions. Everybody can benefit from hair extensions. It's not all about that word that it that it kind of assumes. Like you hear extension. Extension means making something longer, right? And so maybe it was a bad word to start with that it's stuck so hard now that you can't just change it. Sure, we, we could call it hair additions, add hair, hair volumizer. But the fact is hair extensions don't have to just extend hair. So you don't have to do just full heads of extensions. And that's a huge, huge thing to think about. And the funny thing is, 
it's huge, but really what it is, it's small. It's small jobs are big in the in the extension world, in the color world, in every world. That's where you get rich, doing the small jobs. Anything you want to say about that? You know, when <laughs> the extensions has changed so much over the years, in the beginning, it was all about doing a full head. Everybody wanted to do a full head. And I love that you're bringing that up where you do a small job, you can now fit in two, three people a day. That's where you grow. Uh, that That's how you grow your clientele. Because now you put in a pack of hair that only takes you an hour. You put in the next person, you put in a pack of hair that only takes you an hour. That's where it is. Your cost for supply is not that high. Your price to install them is manageable, both for you charging and for your client maintaining. That's the other thing and about, easy, what's that? And an easy upsell. And an easy upsell. And it's an easy upsell, right? If you're buying, and if you're buying she hair, it comes in packs of 10, 10 strands. I mean, there's longer to shorter. There's different mm -hmm. colors. There's fancy stuff that costs more. But for the basic pack of she hair, I guess since this is a public channel, we won't talk about the hairdresser's cost, but we'll talk about what they charge a client. You can charge a client about a hundred to one hundred and fifty dollar upcharge, and you said an hour. A pack of strands from she hair is only ten strands, so you literally can okay. put them in in you know ten twenty minutes, maybe thirty at the most, and it's an easy upsell to a lady. L let me do this. I like to do an analogy. Do you ever see, I mean, I don't even know uh, what the game's called, but do you ever see your friends do a game where they hold their phone on their head like this? Eddie's, Eddie's uh, gone. So oh, most of the people that, out there. Well, no, we help? used to do that with playing cards, and then you'd have to guess high or low. Yeah, well, uh, that's right. But there's even more games where there's a word. And yes, it started with. I don't have friends, Bernard. Use I, don't, I don't play games. You don't have friends, <laughs> Somebody comment down below and just let me know what that game's named. And they put this thing on their head, and it's got a word on there. They do, when we're in Disney World, <laughs> people are doing it in the, in the line, waiting. And uh, I, I don't really like those games. I just feel like I don't have – I get all stressed, and then I can't remember anything. But they put it up there, and this is what I'm saying you should do with your client. You should imagine your client has their uh, a card or their phone up there, and it says hair extensions. And that's the word you cannot say. You cannot say that word and you're trying to get them to say it. That's the game I play in the consultation. And the reason I do that is that most, I heard this in a, in a seminar one time, a professional should not use industry standard words. So what, what does that mean? You, you need to say something? No, is it called catchphrase game? Catchphrase. I think that is it. You know what? I've never downloaded it on my phone, but uh, other people are playing. I just play along, you know, and so catchphrase that it sounds like it would be it. Right. So so industry standard words. What happens is that the people feel they feel dumb when they don't understand a word. And so what I've found is too often now that I've been doing it for a long time, too often a client doesn't necessarily know what the word extension or hair extension means or how it works or how it's done or what it costs. And so they're afraid to just ask when you say, hey, would you like to get some extensions or hey, let's do They They don't even want to talk about it. They're like, oh, no, thank you. So if you said, would you mind if I put a few hair extensions in your class, in your class, in your head to to change anything, depend, depend on highlights, low lights, thickening, whatever, all those things you're thinking in your head, you're not getting them across to them. So when you say hair extensions, the first thing they think is, I've got no clue what that is, how it works. And then I'll put a list here because who do people think hair extensions are for? Because that's always fun for me. People don't really know what or who extensions are for. They either see them on the, in these magazines or on the red carpet in these videos on Facebook, these award ceremonies, and they're on celebrities. And so then you've got you've got they think they're for rich people, they think they're for poor people, they think they're for just certain sex of people. Let, let's see, let me you, you can throw any out there if you want to. Also, because I, I know some people are like, well, don't isn't that just for strippers? I mean, I wrote exotic dancers down here. 
I literally have had customers think that that extensions are only for dancers or only for <laughs> celebrities or only for a certain ethnicity that they are not. They, they don't know. This is this has been the problem for the longest time. And I, I get it down to about two or three reasons why it's been the problem for the biggest time. We used to say, you know, full head, you know, it, it, extensions was always full heads. Yeah, maybe people were doing small jobs, but it wasn't the thing. It wasn't what was trending. It wasn't what was popular. Right. So everybody right. was worried about doing full heads. Well, full heads is very, very expensive. Okay, well, doing a full head is very expensive, then who can handle that? Well, celebrities can handle that. Your exotic dancers can handle that, right? Uh, the, 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 the rich people can handle that, or people with disposable income can handle that. So poor people, you're gone, forget about it. If it's outside of your budget, forget about it, you know? And if it's too expensive, forget about it. What ends up happening is the other one of the other reasons was nobody was allowed to know that you had extensions done. A good extension job was unnoticeable job. That no. was the thing. So if it doesn't look natural, then it's or, fake. Or, or that's exactly why they don't want them. They only see the bad jobs out there, they and they the think jobs. extensions don't look natural. They don't. They don't blend. I don't want that. They don't even know that their friend, their good friend, has a good set of extensions that they can't even tell are in there because they're good. Mm -hmm. Those extensions don't sell themselves because they don't, they're not seen. So what I say is that I like what you said a minute ago, who does them, who gets them. I was also thinking of like the hairdresser who does them. I've taught over the years, I've traveled the country, and one of the unique situations is I, t I teach different classes. So while I'm teaching a hair replacement class, a guy becomes friends with me on Facebook, Instagram, and then texts me a few weeks later. And this has happened multiple times in different scenarios, but this guy's a little more recent, so it's kind of fresh in my head. And he says, now listen, I see you keep popping up on all my, all, all my feeds for everything, even your podcast. You do a lot of extensions. Why did I learn hair replacement from you? I said, well, that's the class you bought. You were interested in, I guess. He said, is there any money in this extension thing? I said, is there any money? <laughs> oh, my goodness, yes. There's definitely money in hair extensions. And I explained to him, you should do both. Because to me, hair extensions brings in the quick, easy money. And hair replacement is a harder sell, but those customers stay with you longer because it's more of a need than a want. So you you can sell a hair replacement client, and then they're going to come back for 20 years. Mm -hmm. An extension client, they might just be growing their hair out, going through a fad. It could be a trend. They, they you know they might change their hair. Sure, you have people that have thin hair that will do it for a longer period of time, but a lot less of them. So he said, really interesting. Okay, well he's book solid. He said, I'm book solid. I'm looking to be more efficient. That's why I wanted to do hair replacement to do higher ticket sales, and that I like because most hairdressers that are super busy say. I can't do extensions or hair replacement or anything. I'm too busy. He said, I'll just raise my prices and I'll weed out some of my customers and have time for the new uh, higher price t uh, services. And I said, yes, God, finally, a businessman in the hair world. That's right. So, or you just squeeze them in smaller because I didn't quite do it that way. I did it a different way. I just started learning the higher price things, advertised them. And when they booked my lower paying regular cut and color clients, couldn't fit in. And that was fine with me because I, I needed to make more money. <laughs> Sound like your video. I needed something more. <laughs> <laughs> but it's so, but it's so true because my, my thing is this, you have no clue who's about to walk in and what their needs are going to be. Right. I was coloring my clients. I've been coloring this one particular client for 20 years okay and yeah we adjust the formula but for the most part we've got her formula down okay mm -hmm. and i adjusted seasonally and all of that she wanted a change and i'm always poking at her all the time you know hey are we gonna are we gonna change up your formula are we gonna change up your formula you ready you ready you ready and every for for 20 years. No, 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 no. This is my color. This is my color. This is my color. Well, Sunday I'm doing her hair and all of a sudden she goes, 
do you think we should change it? Do you think we should go lighter? I'm like, <laughs> whoa, okay. I know. You know, now, with hair color, you have a whole wall full of tubes because you're prepared, right? With extensions, you, you do your consultation, you match up that hair, and then that's it. And if and yeah, and you got your coloring. If you don't have your coloring up to date, and if you don't have your right. coloring ready to go, and if you're not mentally prepared that somebody might be able to switch, my, my favorite thing is okay, if I know I'm doing a number six extension color off the ring there, I'll get six and eight, or I'll get six and four. I'll get a shade lighter or a shade darker than the main primary shade that I'm going to get. I don't care if it's one pack. I don't care if it's multiple packs, whatever it is. That's how you got to do it. The So let's let's get into this, Bernard. Let's let's specifically get into this. What would be... So, so getting learning extensions would be step one. Yes. Learning how to do extensions would be step one. What would be step two? So let's stay in step one for just a minute. Okay, learning them would be step one. So step two, to me, would be the small jobs because when you're learning and doing them, if you do a two, three hour job and you do have a learning curve, mess up, <laughs> then you've got a bigger mess up. Whereas if you do some small jobs, you've got some small mess ups and, that, and you can fix them easily. And in the case where where I was teaching these new people how to make money, I said, like you, you got all this color on the wall. Why not have? You don't have to have all these colors. So remember we talked about extensions automatically makes it seem like you're extending. You don't have to extend hair. As a matter of fact, if I have a lady with hair down to here and I'm going to be coloring her hair this week, and I like to call her Mrs. Jones. So Ms. Jones is coming in. she got medium brown hair. You know what? If I'm just going to thicken her sides a little bit, by putting one pack of hair, five strands on each side of her head. I mean, it can be a little triangle, a right si uh, upside down, right side up, a rectangle. It can be five strands straight in a straight line on each side. If her part's way over here, you know, my, I might be like here and here, distance from the part, just to add a little fullness on each side, or maybe all the fullness is on one side with 10 strands. Literally put that in in 10 or 15 minutes and charge her 100 to $150. But this is where it all starts. First of all, it doesn't have to match her color. I can be a little darker, a little lighter and add dimension to her hair because I'm not popping out through the ends of the length. I'm adding fullness. So I'm cutting it off the same length. So it just adds dimension in there. Whereas if her hair is here and the extensions go down here, boom, I got this line of demarcation. Looks stupid if my color's not right. So I don't have to have the exact color. I can have some hair on the wall. Like you said, I can have a dark brown, a media brown, a light brown and a couple of shades of blonde. So I can have five packs of hair, which is very minimal. And then when Miss Jones comes in, say, Miss Jones, she's got this on her head. It says hair extensions. So I can't say that. I say, Miss Jones, what do you say we make your hair a little thicker today? And this is going to happen three to five times a day, every color client. And she says, oh, yeah, what have you got? What, yeah, it sounds great. She, everybody wants to, oh, every woman wants a hair thicker. Yeah, what have you got? A new thickening shampoo, conditioner, spray, scalp treatment. I mean, she's thinking all the things she's been sold over the years. Which one do you have now that doesn't work or does work? Because if it works, she wouldn't be excited right now. It'd already be done. But instead, she says, what do you have? And now you still can't say the word. You have to start describing so she doesn't feel stupid because she doesn't know what the word means necessarily. And you say, well, you know what I have? I just went to this class or I've got this technique where I've got this and you describe. You don't have to say keratin because they don't know what keratin is either. Call it plastic. I mean, it's so wrong, but she doesn't know. She looks at it and it looks like a piece of plastic. Don't say plastic. We got that. I know. I know you hate that. But listen, I'm just being real. You're describing it. We've got this little this little hard thing that we heat up with a with a tool and then we melt it and roll it right in or fold it right in. It blends right in with your hair and it adds some hair. And somewhere where you're describing, you shouldn't say plastic, but it doesn't matter what you say because she sees it. She sees plastic. I mean, it really don't, you don't have to police it. You just have to say something. And along the way, she's going to say, wait, are you talking about extensions? Is that hair extensions? And you're like, oh, you're so smart. Yeah. Ding, ding, ding. You win. You got, you got the word. It doesn't matter if she says it or not. If All that really matters is that she says yes and pays for it. 
Now, you didn't have to schedule, like, open up your book for this. Now, you just upped a whatever you charge for your color service. It could have been anywhere from one to $300, but you just added another 100 150 That's a significant upcharge for 10 or 15 minutes. Add it here. It'll stay in three months, so it's going to stay in for two or three color services. So she's only going to get it three or four times a year. And so then when she comes back in or she says something about it, you're like, you know what? This is even going to stay in for a few color services. So not next time or the next time, but your next color service, we're going to take them out and put them back in. And we could even change the dimension a little bit, depending on the season. We can go a little redder, a little browner, a little blonder, the money section. So I've helped a few people do that. And then they do three or four of those a day. By the end of the week, you've done the equivalent of a full head. And so now you've done a full head every week for a month. That's four new heads for the month. The amount of increase in money is significant not to mention the people that need more like maybe 20 or 30 strands for fullness on the side so that's even more money a little bit more time but a lot more money and then not that i'm trying to turn these into full heads because i'd just rather keep a whole bunch of small jobs some of them get so excited they're like can you lend them my whole head sure but that might take a week or two of me manipulate my schedule to get you in to do that but yes so that's Step two to me. So now we got, thank you, Carmelina. The game is called Heads Up. Oh, so Carmelina watching, up. thank you. The I game bet is you there's Heads different up. versions of this game because the other one had the word phrase in it. It's probably like when you got to say a whole phrase and heads up, that does sound yeah. more like it might so be. So I will say, now I'm going to say this, step three and step four, it, it, I, I think these two go hand in hand. Today? What's that? You giving away all the steps in the, in day one? Uh, uh, yeah. Just... <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> no, look, I'll, a brief overview. A brief overview. So you've learned it. You've done a couple of small jobs. Now you've built up some confidence. You've built up some experience. You're feeling good. Put together a menu and start talking about it. Okay, so that to me is three and four. Whichever way you want to do your menu first, then start talking or start talking, then put a menu together. Put your pricing together and openly talk about it to every single person that sits in your chair. Let them know that you do, you offer this, you do hair. Put it on your mirror. Put it on your mirror poster, put it on your Instagram, put it on your Tiki Tacks, put it on your, uh, you know, whatever <laughs> social media is, right? But here's the thing. Be upfront too. Don't just flat out, you know, somebody says, oh, do you, do you, oh, you do hair extensions. That's cool. How much do you charge? Don't just flat out say, oh, they start, oh, oh, they, I do extensions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They start at 20 bucks. They start at 50 bucks. Don't, don't get excited and, 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 and just, just blow everything. <laughs> Pull it back. Pull it back. Why, why did somebody get interested? Discover why somebody got interested and what is what is it going to solve what is that going to do for them right so you can say oh extensions are terribly expensive or you can say oh that that's really interesting or or you could say thank you for 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 asking what is it about the extensions that you think are expensive because we hairdressers in our heads spend our clients money for that. I was teaching a retails essential program yesterday, how to sell retail products, right? And how to, how to, how to market it, how to, how to uh, face it at the salon and how to talk about it during the service. We get so scared that we think the client can't afford something, but yeah, too often, too often. Don't, don't, don't spend their money. So here, here's a great example. What I say, talk about it and, and be upfront about it. We are coming into October. October, September, traditionally are the uh, breast cancer awareness months. And, and we start doing these drives for charity purposes. And we start selling all kinds of things to try to raise monies, right? So we can help to donate it. F f unfortunately, be there's cancers, there's all kinds of cancers. Fortunately, every month there is a drive to try to bring awareness, you know, like St. Baldrick's is another great one, big one, right? And 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 so so you could use pink hair for, for breast cancer, you could use the, the, the green hair, 
you know, for St. Baldrick's and, and you can, you can just start off with one strand, one simple strand. You can, you can have them donate 10, 20 bucks. They're happy. They did something. You're happy. You did something. And some kid out there or some woman out there is going to be happy that you tried to help out somewhere. Overall, it gives you the ability to talk and bring awareness. That to me gets you comfortable with, uh, you know, three step three and four, the, the menu of prices and offerings and just getting comfortable talking about them. Yeah, that's good. That's good. And, and for, for the few people out there that might be uh, real estate investors, Think about it like this. Have you ever rented a house or rented out a house? When oh, you by the way, do Thank yes. you, Richard, for your question. He was asking about do you do you do you ask the pricing? Oh, okay. So you know what, pricing. I, I think that uh, we focus too much on pricing, actually. I think that um, when somebody says, I need this, want that, what about this? It's usually a, a, a problem they're trying to solve. And if you help them solve the problem money is going to be a very small part of it. Mm -hmm. Towards the end, if, if they're like, oh, that's yeah, like you were saying, they ask about thin hair. Can you thicken my hair? Can you lengthen my hair? You know, let's talk more about that problem. And this is how we would fix it. Then at the end, yes, you should always bring up the price so that they're not sticker shocked at the actual day because we've got older hair if we're going to be doing a full head or whatever. So yes, I would put the pricing out there, one full price. And that way, they're just like, okay, because you solved the problem. They're more excited about that. But I'm going to get back to the house situation. Mm -hmm. If I was going to rent out one house or one fourplex, which would be better? So if I rent out a fourplex, usually just renting out one or two of them pays the note on the whole thing. And so if I get a renter that moves out of a fourplex, one or two renters, hopefully those other two pay for the fourplex. And the, the point I'm making here is if you have a renter in a house and they move out, there's no rent coming in for two or three months. You're remodeling, trying to get a new renter. You're going in the hole. When you do a full head of extensions, that's like a one rental house. You do a full head, they may or may not come back. You either get the whole income back or you lose it. If you are putting it on four or five people a day or a week and one or two of those don't come back in, a, in two or three months, it's okay because nine out of 10 of them are going to come back. So you never lose all of that income at one time. So that's why I prefer to do a lot of small jobs. It's kind of like renting out an apartment complex. I'd rather have a hundred unit building and 10, 15 people are, are moving out. I'm still got enough income coming in to pay that note on a large scale. I don't have an apartment complex, but it's just an analogy. No, it, it <laughs> so, makes sense. Um, one quick clarification. We, we yes. are always upfront and we always tell the price. What we are, what Bernard and I are trying to say is don't start off upfront with just saying the first thing that you say is the price solve their prop, discover why they're asking how much something costs, figure out what their problem that they're trying to solve is. And then after you explain to them, this is the benefit and this is how we're going to help them then say and 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 to to us to accomplish this look this is how much i charge the question is you know do you um if you if if they want highlights and you pop in 20 strands you don't tell them the price no you do tell them the price but explain to them first why why are they getting that 20 strands why do they need it what is that how is that going to help them what is that going to do for them and then once they understand that and they're happy with hearing that, then you say, to do this, this is how much it's going to cost. Then they accept that price. Then you move forward with the services. Maybe I left that part out earlier, too, because when I do the Mrs. Jones thing, I don't think price is that important because it's so little compared to a full head. And that's what, what where the hang up is for most hairdressers. They can't they can't sell the twelve or fifteen hundred or two thousand dollar full head of extension job because they think, oh, God, I wouldn't pay that much. Of course, my client's not going to, even though they will most of the time. So yeah. when you're doing color and you're already spend and your client's already spending two hundred and fifty dollars on a on a color service and you say, hey, Miss Jones, what do you think we make your hair a little thicker? And she says, what have you got? And you say, I got this thing where I'll put a few little bonds in and we can do it. And it only costs about one hundred dollars. I mean, yeah, I do put the price right in there because to me, that hundred, hundred and fifty dollars is nothing 
it's such a small increase compared to what they're already paying for color and compared to a full head of extensions and compared to what hairdressers are comfortable selling. That's why it works so well for the average hairdresser. Most of us have trouble selling those huge jobs. So it's a small job. It's a small amount of money. It's a small amount of time. And it and it's a small amount of mess ups or problems if you're getting started. So you can start to build your skill and your and your speed on the small jobs. So then the next step will be cataloging your work. You got to portfolio your work, whether, you know, and, 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 and in today's world, social media is everything now. So it's so easy to snap a quick picture and throw it up there and let everybody see it. Right. But the difference is, and this is something that I've been learning, uh, especially from you is don't just take a picture and throw it up there for the sake of throwing it up there. Tell a story alongside putting up that picture and, and why, why that person got what they got and why you did what they did and how amazing that person now looks and feels that that's something that you've been teaching me. And if you can do a short video. It's even better. If you can get that girl, especially with extensions to just be like, you know, and <laughs> get that hair flowing way better. And if you can go a step further and that'll be a whole video about all of that also is um is if you can get them to do something guys you watch you guys are watching the creative videographer videographers on on TikTok that's where the most creativity is going on right now all about the create creativity in the video of course the movements and the dances also i mean it started off with real simple stuff like here's my before and then boom you know the hand would go like that when it and when it did i miss it and when it came off they had long hair, they had red hair, they had a different look, or they had a different outfit on. I mean, that was some of the very, very beginning simple stuff. And then it was just different things, a spin from short hair to long hair. There's so many things you can do. I'll we'll talk about in another video. I want to kind of end it here. But we'll go into more of the how to market what you're doing in the extension world, because I think that is kind of the next step. Learn how to do it. Get good at it. Start talking about it. And then all of that was free. So then we'll go into a bit of the free stuff you do in social media and then how to, how to actually launch it forward by paying to play a little bit if you need to. I'm going to wrap it up there. What about you, Eddie? Any finishing final words? You know, just no? be, 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 <laughs> be comfortable, be excited, be happy. You know, extensions is a really cool thing. It helps people. It's an amazing service and it's a lot of fun to do, whether it's an add on, whether it's for volume, fullness, thickness, you're correcting somebody's thin, soft hair, you're, you're fixing a haircut, you're having some fun, you know, there, there's so many different aspects to what we do. So yeah, you get, get out there and, and start doing, start doing. All right, we're going to wrap it up. Next week, we will get a little bit more specific about different types of extensions. Yeah. yeah. And uh, hit us up with your comments. Let us know what you guys are thinking about. Yeah. How about what you guys are doing? How did some of you guys start with, with uh, building up your clientele? Share that with everybody as well, too. <laughs>